All right, moving on in the farm course. Still in the G and PG rated stuff for all audiences and all of our pretty good paramedic students. And now we're talking about um, the fluid bolus lesson, which is the last of five in this initial unit on IV and IO. This is a faster, uh, less complex lesson than the IV drip rates. A couple of key concepts. So first of all, let's talk about why we're even doing a fluid bolus. Fluid bolus will be indicated when your patient is volume depleted. Maybe they have bled out. Maybe they have had vomiting diarrhea and they've lost fluid volume that way, where they didn't lose any actual blood, but they've lost fluid volume. Maybe they just had really poor intake. Uh, maybe they've been uh, sweating a lot or they um, have really poor intake and they're dehydrated. Either way, their volume is actually low. Maybe it's a relative thing. Maybe their, vasal, their vasodilation um, that has occurred with their vascular container, that's what I'm trying to say, their vascular container has gotten abnormally and inappropriately large. So a patient in neurogenic shock from a C-spine or high T-spine fracture that has impacted the cord. And so now all their blood vessels um, below that injury are no longer under control of the neurosystem. And blood vessels, when they're not being told to stay constricted somewhat, just simply relax. They're very much like paramedics. If you don't tell medics to do something, medics are going to relax. And so that's what happens with blood vessels. If you don't have neuro commands going to blood vessels, they're going to relax. And now you have a container, vascular container, that is abnormally large. Well, it would be nice if we could get that vascular container to shrink. So very few times in, in, in the world is shrinkage a good thing. But we would try to get shrinkage to happen here. But if it doesn't work or is not going to work, maybe you just fill up the container. So that was kind of a little detour, but just giving you a taste of the way we need to think about things in terms of concepts with the cardiovascular system. There is a pump, there is a volume, and there's a container. So how much fluid bolus total volume do you give? Well, generally, the, the rule that everybody is supposed to know and be able to regurgitate is we're looking at 20 cc's per kilogram. 20 cc's per, cc's per kilo of ideal body weight. And you like to give that over 10 minutes. That's pretty optimistic, aggressive. Um, 10 minutes or as fast as you can. Now, it's pretty hard to give it over 10 minutes. And then again, ideal body weight. Now think about a fat guy. The fat guy, when he got big, his blood vessels didn't get big. His vascular space stayed the same. And so... Does he need a fluid volume based on what he really weighs or what he ought to weigh? And so we kind of can uh, overestimate here if you're not careful. So we want to look at 20 cc's per kilo ideal body weight given over 10 minutes. And does anybody do this in the field? Well, yeah, yeah, um, particularly with pediatric patients. We try to estimate their weight. We measure their length and assume that their length and their weight are proportional. We use a chart. We come up with what they ought to weigh, and we multiply that by 20 cc's, and we get this nice number. A good general guideline, however, for all ages, for anybody that's low on volume, whether actual volume loss or relatively low on volume, is one to two liters of abnormal saline is a reasonable thing to do. One or two liters of saline infusion before you get bleeding control. The idea is that we get these trauma patients to where they can get the bleeding controlled and we put IV fluid in just enough to keep reasonable perfusion, maybe just enough to get a radial pulse back or maintain a radial pulse. The idea is not to overload them. So remember, saline is not normal. Saline is not as good as blood. We would generally like to keep the patient's blood in their own body. If we can't do that, we'd like to replace it with somebody else's blood and until we have some fake blood that we can use, we're stuck with abnormal saline. Saline is rarely at the same temperature as the body. It's never at the same pH, and it can wash out good clots and mess up that whole relatively complex clotting process. So one to two liters of saline until bleeding control can be established and just enough to keep that peripheral pulse intact and, and peripheral perfusion. We're not trying to get their pressure back to normal we're trying to have them perfuse their extremities. So what's a safe practice to use? Well, if you do the math, 20 cc's per kilogram, 
to give you this total amount of fluid that you want to give. What, what do you do? Just run that wide open until you get that amount in? Well, a more safe and practical method is to divide that, that total volume you want to give into increments of 250 to 500 cc's and run wide open for a little while until you give that increment and then double check. So you can probably give 250 or 500, whichever you pick, you can probably give that over 10 minutes without a big problem. Then you can recheck. It's important that you don't just run the thing wide open and forget about it. And so we like to take that total volume for the bolus and decide are we going to do that in 250 or 500 cc increments. When you recheck, you want to see that you're not drowning your patient, that they don't have rouse crackles, uh, jugular vein distension. Do they still need the amount of fluid that you calculated? So you came up with the assessment that your patient was low on volume. You went to this magic formula and you started giving the fluid, but now what if you've corrected the volume loss? There's no reason to keep going. So we want to recheck in there rather than just blindly give these large volumes, um, large fluid bolus volumes. And you can always repeat it. But the problem is once you've given the fluid, you can't get it back out of there. And it's going to stay for a little while. It may not stay for a long, long time. It's going to stay pretty much for your involvement with them in the field. So we would like to give them what they need, not overload them. And so you just keep going until they don't have signs of hypovolemia anymore. Or it's obvious that you filled them up too much and now they have fluid overload. Or you get to the, to the stopping point. If your stop point is give a liter and then call me when you've got that if you want to give more. Um, once you've gotten to that max, then you kind of kind of back off there and, and recheck. So let's say you have an average sized female <clears throat> who you decide needs a fluid bolus for whatever reason. She's low on volume for some cause. You've got a liter bag of saline. You've run about 100 cc's in there. There's about 900 left using a 15 drop set. How much fluid? How fast are you going to give it? What, what do you do? What is the the specifics, what are the specifics of what you're going to do next? Well, she's average size, so we'll say 70 kilograms. That's just kind of an average adult female, 70 kilos. Total fluid volume would be 1,400 cc's. How are you going to give 1,400 cc's? Well, I'm going to give it in 500 cc increments. Give her half a liter, see if she still needs it. Give her another half a liter, see if she still needs it. And then maybe we'll give her the rest of it or another half a liter. In this case, the, the bag's got 900 left, so I'm going to mark that where we started, and I'm going to mark where I'm going to end. And I take a pen and, and mark it up there, or a piece of tape and mark it up there. The pen's probably better because the tape might come off. A lot of folks carry a Sharpie with them so they can, can mark on that bag. I'm gonna, maybe I'm just going to remember, maybe I'll write down somewhere that I started at 900 and I want to stop and, and check again at 400. If I had an infusion pump, I would set the thing to alarm. Um, we're just going to run that wide open pretty much until we get down to uh, the 400 cc mark where I've given a 500 cc bolus and then we're going to monitor and we're going to recheck and see if we still need to do that again. I'm going to slow that drip rate down, recheck vitals, recheck lung sounds, give another bolus if I need to uh, and just kind of repeat that as needed. 